Hello and welcome to my channel, I am Bearded Dev, and in this video we're going to be having a look at changing data in a view. Now the first important point to make is that a view doesn't actually store data, it is simply a saved query within the database. So any modifications we make through inserts, updates and deletes on that view will be reflected in the underlying tables. So to carry out these operations, you will need the relevant permission on the underlying table. Now we've got here a simple view that I'm creating, VW product, which at the moment is just simply selecting columns from a product table. Let's go ahead and create that. And then we're going to have a look at the results of that view. So we can see here we've got a number of products, eight products in total. So let's start off with some simple examples and see if we can insert a new product to this view. I'll just bring the results grid down and I'm just gonna start off by writing out my insert statement. We're going to add the code, name, category, Price. Now I'm not going to add created date and modified date because they have default values that are generated in the underlying table uh, and we'll see that shortly once we complete this insert. Um, so we're going to add a let's add in a printer category of computing uh, and let's say the price is 1499 so as we can see here we're inserting into the view not the underlying table let's go ahead and execute that and if we have a look at the results within the view we can see that that new product has actually been added through the view and like I say, that has been added to the underlying table rather than the view. So if we change our query to have a look at our product table rather than the view itself. So here we're just going straight to the base table. We can see that that product has been added there. Okay, so let's see if now we can actually perform an update through the view. So let's try and update this view. Let's change the price of the product we've just created to 179.99 and we'll do that based on the code that we have just created. Let's run the update. That's completed successfully. Let's take a look at the view and we can see that that has actually been changed. Lastly, let's take a look if we can actually delete data through the view. So we're going to be deleting from our VW product. And again, all we need to put in here is where our code equals that code that we've just created. If I go ahead and execute that, See that's been executed successfully. We take a look and that has actually been removed. Now if you are enjoying the video, please do hit that thumbs up button and comment your thoughts down below. I'd love to hear them and it does really help me to grow the channel. If you're not already a subscriber and you are interested in videos on data engineering and data analysis, do hit that subscribe button as well and check out the other videos available. So now we're going to be talking a bit more in detail about updatable views and what makes a view updatable. We've gone through a very simple example there of running some inserts and updates against a view that just selects some columns from the tables. But we're going to go through some, some gotchas and what a view needs to actually be updatable. So we're going to be taking a look at certain rules about what makes a view updatable and I've got a summary of them on screen here. 
So any modifications must reference only one base table. So there's no magic within views if we've got joins that allow us to insert to multiple tables at once. And we will go through some examples of that. Columns being modified must directly reference columns in base table. So we can't use any computations on those columns. Again, we'll go through an example of that and what impact that does have. And columns being modified are not affected by group by having or distinct clauses. And we'll look, look at an example of that as well. First of all, we're going to have a look at what if we add a not null column to our product table that is not actually part of the view definition. How does that affect our inserts, updates and deletes? So I'm going to be changing our product table and adding in this modified by column that's going to be set as not null. That's not going to be part of the view, so we're going to see what impact that has within the view. Okay, so if we just take a look at our underlying table and our view, we can see that the product table has actually got our modified column in populated with bearded dev. It doesn't have any default values, so it's not automatically going to be generated like the created date and modified dates. And we can see that's not actually part of the view definition. So let's have a look at if we could go ahead and insert this value again. So if we execute that, we will now get an error to say we cannot insert null into that column. Now, if we were to try and do something clever and through the view, add this modified by column to our insert definition, And try and run that we are going to get an error to say that modified by isn't actually recognized by that view so that's one way we could break uh, inserts is that we have a not null column without a default constraint um, that would prevent us from inserting through the view let's have a look at if we can still run some updates so let's just change the price of this product code for laptop let's change this to 4299 and if we go ahead and execute that we can see that that actually still works okay because we're not doing anything that would violate that not null constraint in the underlying base table it's actually already been populated and again can we delete let's have a look So we'll delete our, our laptop product. Again, we've got a message to say that's been executed successfully. We have a look at the view and that has actually been removed. So adding a not null column to the underlying base table that's not part of the view will only impact inserts. We'd have to insert directly targeting the underlying base table. Next, we're going to have a look at what happens if we add a join into the mix. So I'm just going to actually reset our product table so we're, we don't actually have that not null column as part of the view. And we're simply going to join our product table to another table I have, which is product stock. And that's actually joined on product key. And we're just going to add a quantity column. Let's just check this runs okay. Yeah, so we actually have our quantity column. That's just imitating how much of that product we have in stock. As you, I'm sure you can tell, these are just made up numbers to go through some examples. So if we alter our view to add that joining, Let's have a look at how that affects our 
inserts, updates and deletes. I remember the rule was we could only insert, we could only perform those operations based on one base table. So again we'll go back to the view we can see we've got the quantity let's have a look now if we can reset well perform our operations so we're going to be performing our insert of our printer product you can see that's executed successfully however because we haven't been able to insert into our product stock table then it's not actually going to show within the view but if we have a look at the underlying table then we can see that product shows we could go and change the view to a left outer join and we'd be able to see that a bit more clearly so if we have a look at the view now we can see that that quantity is just showing as null. Now how about if we tried to change this and do something clever to try and insert our quantity within the view. Uh, let's have this as 92. If we try and run this we can see the view is not updatable because the modification affects multiple base tables so we're actually trying to break the first rule there so we can only still insert into one base table there's nothing clever within views that allow us to shortcut a process let's move on to our update and try and update the price for our new product that we've inserted And again that will still execute successfully we're only updating the price which is one column in that sense and then if we're trying to run our delete again so again we'll just change the product code and see if we can run the delete now delete again we can't perform that operation because the modification is affecting multiple base tables so you can see when we've got joins within the view deletes actually become a delicate process so we can't actually perform any deletes at all but inserts to one base table and ups updates on one base table are okay but deletes are a bit too complicated for it to run even though we can perform deletes naturally within SQL using joins it's not possible within a view that references multiple base tables the next rule we want to check and we're just going to remove the join for this is what happens if we add a computation to our view so let's take our price column and let's just simply multiply that by 2 and add that to the view just give that a column name as price as normal so we're back to referencing only one base table now but we've added a computation on the price column so let's go back to our queries and have a look at that and we can see the changes reflected in the price column so let's see if we can add in our insert try and execute that so now we'll get an error to say the view cannot be updated because it contains a derived or constant field let's have a look if we can run an update now we can't update that so we're trying to update price which is where that computation lies that's a computed column uh, but if we had a look at perhaps let's try and change the category which is not appliances and if we run that update statement and have a look at the results we can see that that has actually been successful so because we're not making any alterations to the price column here we're actually still okay to perform 
an update. But if we was trying to update the price column because it's computed, we wouldn't be able to. Let's have a look at the delete. Remember we've changed the view back to one single base table. And again, that runs successfully. And if we have a look at that, we can see that that's been removed. So when we add a computation to the view, it's going to affect the insert. We're not going to be able to insert a value for that. We also can't update that column specifically, but the surrounding columns we can, and we're still okay to run deletes. The last example we're going to look at is where we modify the view to add a grouping. So again, we're going to be focusing on the price column here. And we're just going to add in a group by we'll remove price. And then we'll just add in a max price. Again, we'll alias that as price. And let's have a look at how that affects our process. So can we run an insert? And again, no, we can't because that price column is computed. Uh, can we do an update on price? Let's have a look at that first of all. So before we do that, we'll just have a look at that underlying view. So that product code is not actually part of it. Let's set that to 429. Let's try and run our update. And again, we can't update price because of the same problem with the, the computation there. We've got price, but can we change category. Let's take a look. Uh, no, now we're going to get an error because it contains aggregates or a group by clause or pivot or unpivot. So again, we can't perform an update, not on the specific computed column, but a column within the actual group by. Uh, and then can we actually run a delete against this view? Let's take a look. So again, we can't actually run a delete because of the aggregates distinct by group by rule. So I really hope uh, you have enjoyed that video. Like I say, the key part of this is when you're performing any inserts, updates or deletes through a view, is those certain rules. So any modifications can only reference one base table. There is no magic within views to allow you to do things outside of the scope of normal SQL. Uh, columns must be directly referenced in the base table, so no, compu no computations and cannot be affected by group by having all distinct clauses. And we even saw in that message pivot or unpivot as well. So again, let me know your thoughts in the, in the comments below. Hit the like button if you have enjoyed that video. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.